I'm Chef Frank, this is Proto Cooks, and today we're making pulled pork. Let's talk about ingredients for my pulled pork. I have pork shoulder or pork butt. We'll talk about that in a minute. We're gonna butcher a little for you guys. Onions, garlic, smoked paprika. Because we're not smoking it, I want a little smoky flavor. Some regular, just plain paprika, some chili flakes and bay leaf white distilled vinegar, dark beer, brown sugar, and ketchup. Let's talk about the cut of meat that I use for pulled pork. I use a pork butt or a pork shoulder. There's a lot of names for this and there's probably like just as many reasons they call it a butt. Uh, one of the reasons that I was told was that it's the butt end of the loin. So even though it's at the front of the animal, it's the end of the loin or the butt end of the loin. Tell me why it's called a butt. I wanna hear from you guys. Uh, and I have a bone-in pork butt here. Here's the thing. I want this to go a little bit quicker, so I'm gonna remove the bone. Yes, the bone adds some flavor, but my strategy for this pulled pork is that I wanna do it fairly quickly. So I'm gonna remove the bone. I'm gonna cut my pork into smaller pieces, right? This large piece might take 10 hours to cook with the bone in. But if I break this down to smaller pieces, like, you know, maybe like, softball sized chunks, it's gonna cook a little faster. Part of the reason that we choose a pork butt or a pork shoulder for pulled pork is that it has a nice amount of fat, right? This is a muscle that gets used a lot so it's not tender and that's why we need to cook it for a long time. But the amount of fat that's in this makes it juicy and flavorful. So it has a really good lean to fat ratio and that's what we want. I bought two pieces of pork butt, they're two separate butts. Uh, I boned out one already. So I'm just gonna bone out this other one. And basically the, the bone in here is a shoulder blade bone. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay my knife. There's always natural separations. So I'm gonna take this out at a natural separation. And I'm gonna try and cut this into pieces that um, are fairly the same size, but you know, you can just basically take it apart. Large chunks, like I said, softball size. I'm not trimming off any fat here. If there was a lot of fat on this or too much fat on this, I'd probably take a little bit off, but I'm not here. This is a very, uh, two nice pieces of pork with just the right amount of fat, right? And whenever, whenever I butcher, I'm always careful to run my knife along the bone. The back of my knife is always resting on bone so that I get less meat left on the bone, right? So I'm just using the, the whole length of my knife. Uh, a lot of people tend to use the tip of the knife like they're a surgeon, but here I like to use the, the whole length of my knife to get off the meat off the bone, right? And even if you don't know how to do this, all you do is feel around. Where does the bone end? Wherever the bone ends, you can cut in. This looks kind of like the keel of a ship, this bone. So it has a bone that goes down and a bone that sits on top. So all you gotta do is really just feel around, poke around, get in there. I'm gonna try and leave this piece of meat fairly large because I want it to um, cook evenly with the rest of my meat. Okay, so there is a nice big chunk. I have another chunk here. And uh, I always save these bones. These bones go into a soup stock or a broth, okay? So there you go. I got as much meat off as I can. Uh, and there's a little bit of meat on there that that's good. It's, it kind of looks like the keel of a ship. Um, another great thing for pork shoulder is sausage. It's got just the right amount of fat to make sausage. So you'll see pork butts used in a lot of sausage making as well. Now that the pork is butchered, we're basically just doing a braise. Now, a braise is a technique that is pretty much done the same way every time. We're doing a brown braise. So what we're gonna do is brown our meat, put it aside, and in the same pot, we're gonna brown our aromatic vegetables, deglaze, and then put our meat back in and put it in the oven. So let's start by browning our meat. Uh, salt and pepper, always salt and pepper. And I'm going fairly heavy. I want this to be seasoned really well. My pot is on, I have it on kind of high heat. Salt, black pepper. Right, I'll give it a turn, I'll use my tongs for that. Turn it over. Okay, 
salt. Whenever I season, I always season up high, so I get good disbursement of salt. The salt disperses really well, okay? Good. I have a little vegetable oil. Coat the bottom of my pan with vegetable oil. I don't need a lot, I just need to start this out. And we're just gonna brown this pork on all sides. Now we bake. And this is gonna give us some nice caramelized flavors to our pork and to our finished sauce. While it's browning, just leave it alone for the most part. There's no need to like lift it up and move it around too much. Leave it on one side for a minute or two. Okay, so the first side is brown. This is what I'm looking for, nice and golden brown. See that? Turn it over. And let it brown on the other side. A little bit of a waiting game. Takes a little bit of patience, but trust me, trust me. It's gonna be okay. All right, our first batch of pork is brown. I'm gonna put it on a tray. I'm gonna add the second batch. So you might need to do this in batches. I said it was quicker and easier. It doesn't mean it's super fast. I'm browning the last of the pork, and silly me, I thought I'd be able to fit all eight pounds into this small pot. So what I did was that I, got, I went and got my big pot, okay? Uh, and I'm just gonna take the pork that's brown, I'm gonna lay it in this pot. I have some stuff behind me that was browned earlier. Oh, this goes in as well. Of course, I'm cooking for a small army, even though only three people live in my house. Uh, any juice, see any juice on there? Make sure you get all those juices in. If I have this in my big pot, I'm gonna take my aromatics. I'm gonna add my onions. And I'm just gonna get my onions a little caramelized. So we have all that brown bits on the bottom called the fond, F-O-N-D. I've talked about this before, but that's like beautiful caramelized bits that are gonna give our sauce some color and some nice roasty flavor. Uh, I'm gonna hit this onion with just a little bit of salt and just a touch of pepper. So my onions are starting to get a little color. I'm gonna add my garlic cloves. We just wanna get some fragrance off of these and start to caramelize them a little. I'm not too worried about the way that I cut these vegetables. I want them fairly small, but for the most part at the end, I'm gonna puree them up. So as long as they're cooked through, I'm happy. Okay, now that they've got a little bit of color, I'm gonna add my paprika, both paprikas, my bay leaf and my chili flakes. Just stir that in the oil just for a second or two. I don't wanna burn them, they tend to burn quickly. And now I'm gonna add my beer. And my distilled vinegar. So this is basically a braise, right? And when you're braising, you're using large cuts of meat and the liquid's gonna go about maybe half of the way up, right? Uh, I don't have a ton of liquid here for all this meat, but I'm kind of counting on the fact that the meat's gonna give off some of its own liquid and raise the level of that. So I'm going with a small amount of liquid. Now through the cooking process, if it starts to dry out, I'm gonna add water. Uh, or you can add more beer if you want. But for the most part, what I'm gonna do now is just let this come to a simmer. Once it comes to a simmer, we'll pour it over, we'll cover this up and throw it in the oven. Our liquid has come to a simmer. Really important, let it come to a simmer before you do this because if you put this in cold into the oven, it's gonna take a really long time for it to get hot in the oven because the oven is not good at bring, bringing things to a simmer, okay? All right, so I'm just gonna spread everything out. I have a fair amount of liquid in the bottom there. I'm gonna hit this with a fair amount of salt now, a really generous amount of salt because I want this to be seasoned well. Remember we have a little vinegar in there and vinegar is gonna counteract that salt and a fair amount of black pepper. I like black pepper. Fresh cracked, if at all possible. Okay, all the ingredients in this pot are hot. Just give that a little push down. Add my foil. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna cook this about half of the way with the lid on. Okay, so it'll steam a little. And then we're gonna take the foil off 
about halfway through so that some, we get a little more browning uh, and the meat isn't so liquidy and the, and the, the broth kind of dries up a little. So let me go throw this in the oven, about 350, and it'll probably be about an hour before we take the lid off, hour and a half before we take the lid off. Okay, the pork is done. Uh, it took about three and a half to four hours to cook all the way through. And what I did was about maybe an hour and a half in, I took the foil off. I took all the meat and I rotated it. I turned it upside down. And I did that a few times through the cooking just so the top didn't get dry, right? Um, and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take everything out and put it onto my sheet tray, okay? Because I'm going to make a barbecue sauce out of this, okay? Uh, I'm going to let it cool for a minute or two, and then I'm going to show you the finished texture that I want. So this is what I'm going to do. Take the meat out. I'm going to take all of my juices and everything in there with the, um, the juice, and I'm going to put it into this container. Oh, I got another towel there. I'm going to get it all into here. Try not to make too much of a mess. Okay, so the juice is here and I put it in the, the measuring cup. I wanna take out that bay leaf and it just makes it a little easier for me to skim some of the fat off. I'm not gonna save the fat for this. The pork itself has enough fat. And basically I'm just pushing the ladle down just far enough so that the fat comes over the top and the juice stays in the measuring cup. Ideally, you let this sit overnight in the fridge and the fat will coagulate and you can just peel it off the top. But a little bit of the fat in there is not a big deal. I don't mind a little bit of fat, but I want all the onions and garlic to stay and remain in there. Meats aside, uh, and I'm not letting it cool too far, but right now it's way too hot to handle, so I'm gonna let it cool for a minute or two. I, I got my juice into a bowl. I skimmed off some of the fat. I'm gonna add my brown sugar and I'm gonna add my ketchup. And I have an immersion blender or a stick blender here. And I'm gonna buzz it up. Okay, it's a nice thick puree. Give it a tap, put it into my pot. Okay, and let it cook for about three to four minutes, just to kind of cook all the, the sugar and make sure it's combined. Pureed sauce in the pot. It just came to a simmer. I'm just gonna give it a taste now. I'm gonna lower the heat, give it a taste. And this is our chance to season it. It's got a really nice flavor. It's not too sweet. It's not like a smoky barbecue sauce. It's basically the dripping. So it's got a good sweetness to it. It's nice and rich. I'm gonna add just a touch of some apple cider vinegar just to cut some of that richness. So it's maybe like a tablespoon or two of apple cider vinegar. Oops. And then I'm gonna taste one more time. Great, we're gonna leave it there. Barbecue sauce is done. Let's work with the meat now. Um, and there's a couple of common misconceptions with this, right? Is that you can cook this forever and it just falls apart. We don't want that. If you cook this for too long, believe it or not, you can overcook it and it gets dry. What I'm looking for is this. I get two forks and I can pull it apart with the two forks. There's a little bit of pull, a little bit of tug. We call that fork tender. And that's what I want. The meat still has some like juiciness to it. The meat isn't totally dry. You don't need to put a ton of sauce on it, but there's a little bit of a, a tug. Like you have to pull it apart just a little. Fork tender, not falling apart, okay? So fork tender, you see how I get my forks in there and I pull it apart, right? You can also use the pair of tongs that we have or if I get a pair of gloves, this is hot, so it's a little harder to do with the gloves, but you can just get a bowl like I have over here and just grab it and pull it apart, right? Um, you can also, when you're pulling it apart, look if there's any big chunks of fat. You might not want big chunks of fat in here, but uh, if you do this, it just kind of falls apart. You still have to pull just a little, but it's not shredding or just kind of like you touch it and it disappears and falls apart. So let me finish shredding this and then we'll combine it with the sauce 
and we'll give it a taste. Let's put some barbecue sauce on this. I'm gonna hit it with just a little bit of salt right now because the inside isn't seasoned, so we've shredded this up. I'm gonna hit it with a little salt and I'm just gonna put some barbecue sauce on it. Or it's not really a barbecue sauce, it's kind of the dripping sauce, right? Uh, you'll notice my pulled pork has large chunks. I like large chunks. I don't like this to be like super shredded and fine. Um, and like pureed up. I want to have some big meaty chunks in there and I'm just going to add enough of the sauce so that it holds together. Okay, some of it will break up but otherwise it's going to hold together when we put it on a bun. Mm, delicious. One more spoonful, or maybe two. Let's do two more. All right. Let's slap this on some bread and give it a taste. The pulled pork is done. I wanna talk really quickly about the pulled pork in general. It freezes great. So if you wanna get it to this point and freeze it in Ziploc bags for another night to have it for another dinner, go ahead and do it. All you gotta do is reheat it with a little water, steam it, and it's perfect. I have some potato rolls. I love potato rolls. I'm gonna make little sandwiches out of this. You can top these with whatever you want. Coleslaw, pickles, you can put some mustard on it if you want. But they're really nice uh, little sandwiches. You can serve this pretty much any way you want. It works really well on buffets. So if you have a party that has a buffet, this works really well too. But I'm just gonna go plain for right now and give it a shot. Okay, this is the one I'm gonna eat. Okay, let me go. Here we go. Mm. That's good, I'm gonna get it all over the place. Uh, the sauce isn't overpowering, we taste pork. The pork has a little bit of chew to it. It's not shreddy and dry, it's beautifully cooked. Pulled pork, my way. I hope you enjoyed this video, if you did, give us a like, subscribe, give us a thumbs up, hit the little bell. We do a video pretty much every week. There is an address in the description if you ever want to contact us that way. Uh, I'd like to thank my Patreon uh, sponsors. Thank you for sponsoring our channel. We have merch, our t-shirts, Need Salt t-shirts, I Control the Salt t-shirts, in a link down below. I hope you enjoyed the video. This is Chef Frank for Proto Cooks. Try my pulled pork. Have a good one. <laughs>